I'm Travel Agent Annie with AGP Travel Planning, and this is What to Pack for a Week-Long Caribbean Cruise. When I'm getting ready to pack for a trip, the first thing I think about is, what will I actually be doing? Sometimes while packing, we can get carried away with dreams and idealisms. So I like to just get real with myself and ask myself, what will I actually be doing? Because I know that most likely I will not be working out in the fitness center or participating in group fitness classes, so I don't actually need to pack those workout clothes. I know I'm probably going to overindulge and get my money's worth at the dining venue, so I do need to pack my comfy stretchy pants. And I know I won't really need to pack five dresses because I'm fine with re-wearing the same two or three dresses as need be. Now, of course, this all may be 100% different for you, so do get real and ask yourself before you start packing. Realistically, what will I actually be doing? Another question you should ask yourself before you even start packing is, What does my cruise ship allow on board? There are rules. For example, I don't bring any heating hair tools with me because cruise lines consider them a fired hazard and most cruise lines ban these items and will confiscate them on board. Same with extension cords and power strips with surge protectors, among other things like alcohol allowances. So be sure to check the cruise line rules or check with your TA before you pack. When packing for a Caribbean cruise, I know some obvious things to pack straight away. Swimsuits, sun protection, and seasickness motion sickness prevention medication. I specifically recommend Bonine because it is non-drowsy, unlike Dramamine, and you can get it over the counter. Scopolamine patches are another great option for many with severe seasickness or motion sickness, but these you will need a prescription from your doctor to get. In fact, aside from your passport, the number one thing you don't want to forget to pack, in my opinion, is your medications. The main reason I think medication is the most important thing to pack besides your passport, is because if you forget it, it can be hard to find it in port towns. And if it is available for purchase on the ship, it will be highly marked up in price. Also, if you express to the medical crew or crew in general that you are feeling sick, they might think that you have COVID or are contagious and require you to take a COVID test. If you do end up testing positive, regardless of whether you exhibit or experience any symptoms, you will be quarantined on board for the rest of your cruise. It is for these reasons specifically that I bring any and all types of medication I might possibly need with me, especially making sure I have enough of my prescription medications before leaving home. However, if you do find yourself with some type of contagious illness like a norovirus or COVID, it is common sense to self-quarantine. Wear a mask, drink plenty of fluids, and always wash your hands excessively. This seems like an appropriate time to bring up travel insurance. If in the unfortunate chance that you do get sick or injured on your vacation, your regular medical insurance will not cover you outside of your in-home work network. That is why it is so important to purchase travel insurance. It can cover emergencies, cancellations, delays, and medical services, and is usually pretty affordable. I always recommend adding travel insurance to my clients. So do your own research and be sure to read the fine print so you can decide if it is worth it for you. For a week-long Caribbean cruise, I tend to bring two swimsuits. That way, when one is still wet and drying out, I have a fresh one to put on. I know many of you might even bring more than two swimsuits, and that's not a bad idea either. While I always recommend to at least bring some sunscreen on a Caribbean cruise, 
I also highly recommend bringing a rash guard or similar type swim or sun shirt like this fish suit one here that I wear. It has long sleeves so it protects me all the way down and even has thumb holes so you can stick your hands in there and get some protection. And I really love that it has a hood with a ponytail hole for your hair. Um, this is just so great at protecting so much of my skin from the sun and limiting the amount of sunscreen I really have to put on. And then I also have matching leggings here as well to protect my legs. Not only can you get away with less sunscreen, but you will be doing the marine life a huge favor. The substances used in most sunscreens kill coral and fish, so make sure to wear a rash guard instead and use only reef safe sunscreen if you plan to swim or snorkel. I'll share a link of reef safe sunscreen options in the description box below since no one enjoys their vacation if they are sunburnt. Next for a Caribbean cruise, I always make sure to pack some hats and sunglasses. For me, that looks like one wide brimmed hat like this one that can roll up so that it fits easily inside a suitcase and one baseball cap. And then for sunglasses, I always bring my prescription sunglasses and just one cheapo pair that I can wear with contacts. If you plan on doing lots of walking around outside on the decks of the ship, doing some shopping or going to restaurants and port or hiking around in nature, sun protection is still the number one thing that comes to my mind because you do not have fun on your vacation if you're sunburnt. So I always bring one lightweight long sleeve button up like this and these lightweight linen pants to wear walking around or hiking around outside in the sun. Even though we're talking about a Caribbean cruise, weather can be unpredictable. Like a few weeks ago, when a ship heading for the Bahamas got rerouted to Canada. So you always wanna make sure that you bring something for that just in case. So I always bring at least one hoodie and one rain jacket. Oh, you're gonna get us in trouble, aren't you? Oh, you're gonna come too? You gonna get in the suitcase? As I mentioned earlier, I also like to bring one really comfy outfit, like what I'm wearing. Some type of sweats or joggers, um, some slippers, definitely bring some warm socks for the airplane. This is what I'm wearing through the airport and on the plane. And this is what I can lounge around in if I do tend to overindulge or get sick on the ship. Um, also, don't forget your pajamas. Now we're on to fancy clothes. If you're like my husband, this is the bane of your existence. Um, but if you love dining out and you love going to the parties and dressing up and doing all that thing, you go. You, you get your fancy clothes. You bring as many as you want. What your heart tells you is true. For someone like my husband and me, though, this just means one to two fancy outfits. Um, for my husband, that will look like, you know, a couple of button up the front Hawaiian style uh, shirts and some khaki shorts or pants that are nice. Um, and then for me, that looks like I'm bringing three dresses. This is a Virgin Voyages cruise. So we're bringing our red for Scarlet Night and then just two other options of dresses. These can also double as swimsuit cover-ups for me um, on some of our port days. Now this is a really big one and something you might even wanna consider before you start packing your other outfits, and that's shoes. Because shoes are heavy and shoes can take up a lot of room in your luggage. I usually just limit myself to one pair of sneakers that I will wear on the plane. These will actively be on my feet, so that way it's not in the bag. To a pair of Birkenstocks, this is what I wear with all of my fancy outfits and some type of water shoe or flip-flop for the pools and for the beach. My husband and I try to limit ourselves to one checked bag that we share. When I'm traveling alone, I limit myself to just a carry-on. 
Um, because I limited my shoes and all my other outfits and clothes, I have room for a tote bag, which I always recommend as like your beach bag, your little bag to carry with you into port. Um, a backpack is also good, but this is also great just to take down to the beach or pool. And in here, I'll put my snorkel and mask. And pro tip, if you are going somewhere where it really gets warm, like really far south, you can always bring a little fan to keep yourself cool. Finally, I try to minimize toiletries. I expect my accommodations to provide basic toiletries, and I'm not one who will spend more than five minutes on styling hair and makeup. And that's all packed. And there you have it. Those are my top tips for packing for a week-long Caribbean cruise. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please click the thumbs up to give it a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next video where I'll share what I keep in my carry-on and my top tips for embarkation day. If you'd like some help planning and booking your next vacation, please reach out as I am a travel agent and would love to work with you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.